Hi, welcome to the next episode of DIY Retro. Today I'll show you a device I built a few years ago and to be honest, I'm quite proud of it. So let me introduce you to the charming, very useful and of course vintage looking power bank uh, that I call the power box. Apart from its retro look, believe me or not, the power box is a very useful device. As you can see, we have here AC voltage output, USB port, and in my opinion very cool looking watt meter which makes it even more vintage and reminds me of electrical devices from early 20th century. Another very useful feature in this device is that it has replaceable lithium ion cells which makes it even more durable and longer lasting. So let's dive into the world of vintage design and get to work. As a casing for the power box, I am using a popular wooden box, the type often used for decoupage. These boxes are frequently used for storing jewelry or other small items. Next, I trace the spots where I will need to cut openings to place the essential components of the power bank. This includes the main switch, charging socket, watt meter, AC outlet, USB port, spots for LED indicators and ventilation holes. After marking the spots for the listed components, I proceed to create the openings. As with my previous project, I use only basic tools like a drill and a jigsaw and maybe a screwdriver. Ok, the case is ready for painting, however before that I will sand it down using sandpaper to ensure a smooth surface. For painting I am using a brown spray paint with a lacquer. The paint has dried and I can slowly start assembling the electronics inside the case. However, before doing that I will attach a stylish latch that allows the cover for the lithium ion cells to be opened and closed. Next I mount the components into the prepared holes in the case. For the main switch, charge lever indicator and a DC charging port, I have already soldered the wires beforehand since it was easier to do so. As you can see, the key element that gives the power box its charms and originality is the watt meter. I made it very simple way from an ammeter and I added a yellow LED to illuminate the watts meter display and in my opinion it creates ultimately impressive effect. If you would like, I can make a separate short video on how to convert an ammeter into the watt meter using this project. Just let me know in the comment section. Into this prepared case, I mounted a voltage converter. This converter will transform the 12 volts DC from the lithium ion cells to 220 volts AC. I attach the converter to the case using super strong double sided tape and the further is secured with the hot glue. 
Next, I mount the USB port to the case and I'm soldering the wires connecting the AC socket to the converter. Another crucial component is the fan, which cools the electronics. I'm mounting it with double-sided tape. All these electronic elements I'm connecting to the main DC-AC converter. Of course, all these components will be secured hot glue. Okay, the next very important component is the DC step-down converter. It's the same converter used in a previous video about the Motorola cell phone. It has the capability to set a constant voltage and constant charging current, making it ideal for charging lithium-ion cells. I've already soldered red LED to inform us that charging process is running and also mounted additional radiator to make sure that converter won't overheat during the charging our power bank. Additionally, it has a wide input voltage range, which makes the power box even more versatile. As you can see, I connect step-down converter to a DC charging port of the power box. And now it's time to assemble perhaps the most important component of any power bank, the lithium-ion cells, the charging circuit and the monitoring system. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, the power box will have capability to swap out lithium-ion cells. For this purpose, I am using two battery holders, each accommodating three cells. I attach the holders together using double-sided tape. Next, I need to connect the wires of each holder in such a way that the output voltage of the entire set of six cells is approximately 12 volts. The cells will form a 3S2P configuration, which means three cells connected in series and two in parallel. Additionally, I connect the holders together in such a way that the lower pins of the holders form a negative bus for the Li ion cells and the upper pins with the red wires form a positive bus. This configuration will make it easier to place cells and reduce the risk of making mistakes while they are placing them. And of course, I solder together all connections. For the lithium ion cells, it is necessary to use a battery management system, BMS, and a balancer. These circuits ensure that the cells do not get overcharged or overly discharged. The balancer also ensures that the voltage across all cells remains equal. Of course, for this cells configuration, it is necessary to use 3S BMS and a balancer, which means 3 cells connected in series, providing approximately 12 volts, as I mentioned earlier. First, I solder the appropriate pins of the balancer and the BMS, then I will attach the constructed electronics to the back of the cell holders and connect them to the wires in the holders. Now it's time to solder the wires connecting the BMS to the step-down converter which will regulate the voltage and the charging current. Once that is done we can proceed to set the appropriate charging current value. But first I need to set the output charging voltage. Since I used an additional diode on the output of the step-down converter I set the voltage to 13.1 volts. The BMS will ensure that the voltage on the battery does not exceed 12.6 volts for the 3S configuration. After setting the final voltage, I connect the converter output to the BMS and the balancer. Then I place all six cells in the holders, remembering that the negative rail is at the bottom and a positive one at the top, which means that I place all six cells in the same position. As you can see, after connecting the power supply to the power box, the red LED light up. 
indicating that current is flowing to the cells, which means the charging process is underway. I set the charging current to 1.5 amperes. I could easily set this value to around 3 amperes, but slower charging of the cells will result in a longer lifespan. Then I install the step down converter in a power box housing and start making the last connections in a power bank's power circuit. The power circuit of the power bank is illustrated in a diagram. The power supply for the battery charger indicator and the backlighting of the watt meter is also controlled via the main switch. Now it's time to permanently place the holders for the lithium ion cells in a power box housing. First, I stick them in a designated spot using double sided tape. Once I'm sure that the cover part of the holders opens and closes correctly, I use hot glue to firmly and securely attach the battery holders. As you can see, the power box is essentially complete. Finally, I mount a stylish leather handle, making it easy to carry the power box around. In my opinion, the power box looks stunning. It combines the design of electronic devices produced in early 20th century with a modern electronics, which is something I personally love. Operating as simple as a flip and a switch, I believe that both vintage cars and electronic devices had a certain soul, something that is missing in our contemporary products. Besides the amazing appearance, the power box is a very useful device, which you will see in a moment. The power box works perfectly as a power source for laptops, tablets, smartphones and practically all personal electronic devices, even a soldering station for example. My friends use his power box to power his MPC console or a charging electronic scooter. It also great to travel or camping. Charging it is simple with a regular power adapter with an output voltage between 14 and 22 volt DC. Additionally, the power box can be charged from a car cigarette lighter socket and the coolest part in that is that it can also be charged using a small solar panel. I used a 30 watt PV panel for this purpose and it's more than enough to keep the power box fully charged. So now you know how to build a cool looking, fancy and very useful device like this one or like this one, black and brown my two favorite color of this device, of course you can choose your own color. In the past I've made several dozens of power boxes, uh, so that's all in this episode. I hope you like it, if so uh, leave a comment, like and subscribe to the channel and see you soon in the next episode of DIY Retro.